everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have Anushtuk Mukherjee, who is a GSOC 2021 participant. He's also an AI intern at Samsung and AI researcher and a patent holder with publications. Also, he's a public speaker and founder of MBK. So today in this video, we'll be knowing the complete guide to GSOC from Anushtuk. Anushtuk, welcome to our channel. And now the platform is all yours. Uh, thank you so much, Upasana, for the warm welcome. Uh, yeah. So in this session, I will be firmly speaking about what are the do's and don'ts any participant have to, participant have to think before participating into GSOC. There are many small, small technicalities that we often miss up. So like this session will be a covering all through that when we are having an upcoming GSOC planning for 2020. So I'm in this profession of artificial intelligence for more than three years, worked at nine plus companies and uh, like, Ex, like work with government also at IIT Bombay and IIT Patna. So I will be sharing more about my expertises and experiences in this field. Yeah. Okay, that's great to know. Also, a lot of people don't have enough knowledge of GSOC only. So could you please tell us about the GSOC press, uh, process and how you got into that? Yeah, so the GSOC like is something like when we are speaking about this Google Summer of Code, it's all about uh, open sources, right? So the process of getting into a GSOC fairly looks very simple. Like there is a platform and like the process is initially organizations that participating companies or the open source companies have to apply to the platform. And then the internal reviewers body will be just seeing it, which companies should participate this year. Most of the years, the companies used to repeat uh, every year. Even we can see a new company comes up. That's it. It's just simple to that. And once the organizations gets finalized and then uh, they used to release their problem statements. Right now you can see at a GSOC 2022 website, this is the, this time of the year when they had released the problem statements. Like the process is simple. Each company, each participating company comes up with a problem statement. The company expects this students to give a proposal for the problem statement. So the major selection criteria for the GSOC is the proposal one. So once the student used to screen the problem statements, like fairly by the next month, the applications of the students will be opened. The students is getting actually one month to fill up the application form. Uh, I fairly say since the applications or since the problem statements is open right now, the preparation time is additional one month. So within this two months of scape, a student have to write a, a proposal to the selected problem statement. Now, there are some rules to the particular uh, application. Uh, simply, the student can select up to three companies or apply up to three companies. The thing, thing should not exceed up to three companies. Uh, at this year, at GSOC 2022, one of the most important thing is in the previously, uh, the GSOC was only simply for the college students who used to are right now into their up to fourth year and they should have an active college participation when they are coming out of the GSOCs, but this year it is also open for simply open source practitioners as well. So if you are not a, a college student, you can participate this year also in the GSOC, right? So this is a very big thing actually to enrich the open source community. So the simple thing is like, since the problem statements are released right now, the student have to come read the problem statement, analyze their good fit into it. I will be rather explaining about this kind of how to select and how to not in the last part of the uh, of this session but yeah you have to choose the problem statement you have to draft a proposal accordingly now, this proposal drafting is also something like uh, some companies like OpenCV. i will be mentioning the ai based companies since i have uh, seen most of them so in open cv have their own proposal format and some other companies have their own proposal proposal formats but when you are going for the big companies like facebook just framework or Google TensorFlow or any kind of bigger companies, open source frameworks like OpenVINO of Intel. So it doesn't kind of doesn't have any kind of the proposal format, but it should be very good. Like if you contact a ex GSOCer first who had worked on that particular company, uh, worked on that particular company at GSOC previously, and you should have a look on how they had proposed uh, their accepted proposal format because proposal matters a lot. So one single piece of the paper will be deciding whether you are participating in the GSOC or not in this year, right? So this is something the program works in this case. So yeah, so the proposal should be very sound. It contains like a uh, proper stuff of experience means like, suppose there is any kind of XYZ problem statement, you cannot directly go and write like, I will be doing this, I will be doing this and I will be solving like this, this will be my solution. So simply the outcome will be a rejection. So you have to properly first draft out how you understand the problem statement, because rather if, you, if I speak about Google TensorFlow, uh, the proposal I had given, I haven't mentioned about the solution anywhere in this case. 
I had rather focused on defining the problem at my understanding. Like if this is the problem, then these things we can do. So make a bigger para about understanding the problem, the problem formulation, what we tell in the research perspective, why it is important because suppose X, Y, Z is a problem statement. So they will be simply drafting it out. So you as a participant, the major important thing is whenever we are applying any kind of solutions, we need to understand why and where to apply. Right. So why and that questions and answers comes from simply understanding about the problem. So they expect the student to understand the competency in this particular problem statement case. So write a good, 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 good amount of knowledge while writing the problem statement domains. You can also add your proposed solutions. In this section, I personally prefer to give some walkthrough to your experience. Suppose there is a project on uh, CNNs, then simply draft out your experience that previously you had played with CNN. So for an example, suppose there is a project on Android app using a flutter. So simply draft out your previous experiences and then try to prove why you are good fit to solve this problem. Also uh, try to add a simply uh, map, like a, a, a simply map in sense, like in which amount of the time, how much thing will you achieve since the JSOC is like two months and something like that. So you better it should be if you are writing like week one to week two, I will be reading blogs and I will be doing background research. Week three to week four, I will be uh, I will be uh, deploying this part of the code. So more you give the deep throw analysis, so the, it simply it feels like the student is understanding the problem statement at the deeper end, right? And that's the three important key points for uh, cracking a GSOC application. And apart from this, make a warm background, draft out your open source contributions importantly. I will be coming more about the open source contributions and their importance while participating in the GSOCs in the next half of this talk. But yeah, so the simply these are the three most important key points. So for in my case, uh, it, I, I, my first GSOC application was there on when I'm in my first year. So when I participated in GSOC, so in the very first year, I tried to like, okay, I am just, uh, I will have participated in the GSOC without having any much knowledge about open source and like I, GSOX is something uh, the name of the Google, I need to participate. And I saw a problem statements written everything. Like I will be doing this, I will be doing that. And I will be solving like this. So a simple mail came to me like this year, you cannot participate, unfortunately. Second year, when I just came up, I try, I did a lot of background research. I talked with my seniors who had talked, who had previously cracked the GSOX saw their samples of the applications, studied the problem statements of, in a depth. I became active in the TensorFlow community for the last one year. Like when I got the rejection from the first year, I got active into the TensorFlow community. Simply anyone can join the community. There is no rules and regulations that you cannot join and you can join. Anyone, you can go to Google groups and simply click and join their community. I started participating into their discussions and I started giving open source contributions to Google. One of my biggest contribution was uh, accepted uh, at Google research. Like I played with some kind of the BART architectures and my PR got accepted and that was a start. So yeah, I give, I make some kind of open source contributions and also I worked through a lot of projects and internships on the domain of AIML on the deep learning knowledges. And then I made the proposal thoroughly, got it reviewed by some XG suckers as well. So because the review process is very important and if anyone doesn't have any contact of an XG soccer, so no problem, you, if the participant, if the participant is applying for TensorFlow, every open source company have an open source community. You can simply put your proposal for a review in the community and the people are there, they will be reviewing it up. This is the game of community, right? So yeah, I got it reviewed from many places, like understand the changes and yeah, it got accepted, like the proposal got accepted, yeah. So yes, so that's about how anyone can think and approach about the GSOC and it was like my acceptance story about the GSOC sensor flow in yeah. So it's uh, like a lot of people are very new to development. They don't even have much knowledge about the development only. So any step-by-step -step approach to those who are really a fresher, like they don't have, or do, they haven't done any coding development. They just know the term GSOC, but they have a dream to get into that. So any step-by-step -step guide to them. Yeah, sure. So the most important thing is like when we speak about development, like I will be not speaking about that kind of the traditional stuff, like complete data structures, algorithms, complete knowledge on the languages and everything. But there is a very short uh, pathway that I always used to tell whenever I mentor anyone. The pathway is as simple as like 
foreign if first learn the mother of all languages that is c start from c go on very deep into it you have to understand all kind of the architectures that the c have whether we are speaking about the pointers whether speaking about the memory allocations you have to understand everything simply see and it's like it's not a very difficult job because every engineering student knows this one language very properly the other don't know java or c++ every one of us know c once you done with the c clear the concepts of the data structures and algorithms obviously in c++ uh, I, i will be not like if you once know c the c++ will be very easy that's not a very big problem so what i mean by clearing the concept of the data structures is not like this ki you have to practice actively competitive programming into the platforms like the leap code code forces or the hacker rank so cp is your complete choice because cp and D, cp and dsa is a two different thing dsa is the fundamental of computer science so we even a developers need dsa at every aspect suppose my project at gsoc was like customizing mascar cnn right so customizing mascar cnn in the terms the initial goal was to improve its accuracy and time complexity that is efficiency right so on that case i didn't needed a lot of like machine learning knowledge i simply have to customize the data structures of the algorithm and the work is done then i entered into the any kind of other stuff so not only for ai ml even if you are a full stack developer and you work on servers so you need to know which data structure you will be using to extract the data within a small amount of time so this is the fundamental knowledge a good understanding of data structures and algorithms is required so it will not take a lot lot of time a lot of youtube tutorials is to teach the fundamentals and the theory so done with dsa so it will hardly take 6 to 7 months to understand the concepts behind it once you are done then choose your tech stack the uh, one of the major things that a student is doing students are doing right now they are uh, flowing with the flowing with the wind like okay uh, everyone is doing ai ml i will be also doing ai ml so don't go with this wind because this is a wind right now in india so because the thing turns into a false love of the ai ml or what we call as the false practice so rather like try to explore the field when are you in a first year so you are a fresher so studying dsa or c++ you will be getting a lot of opportunities to attend webinars youtube sessions and everything where you can know at least what happens in this field so try to understand which fields excites me like whether ai ml excites you or like web development excites you or android dev excites you so choose a technical field don't get into a lot like android bhi kar lunga web bhi and like this and this and all so choose only one field and try go it a very deeper to it like start if you are going to android i'll since because there are a lot of fields so i will be just telling into a very crunchy way like yeah okay so if you are going into android then start learning the fundamentals first again basics because see gsocs and everything demands your experience and experience comes from making good projects and a projects comes from the fundamental knowledge so like if you are going into any field study the field suppose if you are into android so just for an example android there is a wind in android of flutter because everyone is practicing flutter but the basic skill comes from the java i'm not telling about kotlin but yes understanding the java architectures is very important while playing with the android models yeah flutter is the future flutter flutter is the everything but yeah try to make the fundamentals first make sound projects internships is obviously important but yeah more than having an internship is how you understand and how you deploy it your knowledge into a project so make good projects many of the students ask what do you mean by a good project good project is not always like solving a, a billion dollar problem it's like yes if you you can participate into a hackathon there you can easily get a practical real life problem statement and which you can solve within a very small amount of time add good tech to it and make it more technically sound that's very good project right and yes and obviously it should not be copied from anyone's code from github or youtube that's it and yes uh, so yeah and also practice dsa because cracking any coding interview and going into a deep technical job needs a very basic dsa round every company doesn't want a deep core cp understanding a dsa works so yes that's it and once you are done with this all kind of things if you want to go into this kind of open source since everyone is open source right now uh, because the i personally feel open source is a, a customized term right every one of us from the very start of our day used to give the code to github and our all repositories are already open source so every one of us is doing the open source contribution just you have what you have to do you have to add little bit color to it suppose uh, whenever you are dreaming for a gsoc make your dream companies when when i started dream to gsoc i wanted to be at google tensorflow 
because when i didn't know the tensor flow at my because i am practicing aiml so at my very starting of the first year i loved the logo of the t then i started knowing about tensor flow that's it so this is how my dream starts from a very layman's language and yeah now students are more technically advanced than us so yeah so if you are dreaming for a company start getting active into their community look how what kind of projects they are looking forward at and start uh, working or looking give a look on their github repository suppose you want to participate at again like participate at open cv right you want to participate at for an example flutter community so every community at github have their issues section and simply go and start sorting with the keywords good for beginners and something like this very basic basic issues are being present over there sometimes there even a documentation fix sometimes it is even a bug so try give us a give a try so it will give you also a development experience like you will be setting up their basic environment for fixing their bugs so this will be helping you out and open source contributions is a very valid project right now every company is consider it so yeah so more you start giving the contributions it will be very easy to get into gsoc and most many students used to have a plan b strategy so before going into gsoc just a warm up will be start participating in hacktober fest not for a t-shirt but for a good contribution and uh, yes you can also participate at uh, girl script summer of code and girl script winter of code they are also very good practicing stuff for the gsocs yeah that's it so this is the how you can like if you are beginner you can this dream about it, about it yeah so in gsoc we have two things one is the part of mentoring and other is a participant if i'm not wrong so what are these two and how do they differ like and how one can approach to mentoring and participation so basically when we call about the uh, when we call about the mentoring and the participation so first i will speak about the mentoring so initially when the gsoc application stands on so at the month of the january or the very starting of the january open source organization approach gsoc like google summer of code they used to give their applications with the problem set in internal problem set so once they comes up with the applications are done participating organizations used to apply so they used to sort and at the very end or start of the february or the mid of the february they or very start of the february so basically the accepted organization lists get published this this organization is going to participate so uh, what happens or every organization have some kind of allocation allocation in the in the term once is one the allocation of mentorship is suppose tensorflow is coming with seven problem statements so some it, it is not always that every problem statement should have two mentors but google generally i will be telling about google i don't know about the other organizations so just a very basic idea most flow mostly it works same according to the gsoc policies but yeah general strategy is one problem statement with two mentors right so what the company generally prefers company gives one mentor from their side another mentor who can apply so generally applications is not like that kind of thing like open applications and something like this yes, yes there is a platform at the gsoc website once you can see the accepted organization list get published when you, anyone can go with their previous experiences and can have an application to it no problem basic like how the person can help the community and how the person have a vision while applying as a mentor the gift of mentor have to give a vision to solve the project but mostly ex gsocers is getting selected as the mentors so what happens if the last year you are you are you are your project is successfully completed at a gsoc or last to last year any previously if at any company you had completed the project suppose you are you are from open cv and last year you had completed your project uh, perfectly uh, with all two stages of the reviews completely done and then in this years of the gsoc the company will be giving you an open call so last year you have had participated and you have completed your project so this time you become the mentor so this is the thing of the mentorship like externally the thing doesn't happens the mostly one company mentor and a second mentor which happens is from the ex gsocer is getting happened so and the participants so what is the difference in between the participants and mentor so the participants process i had already already told like anyone have to have once the everything is set up problem statement see the problem statement sort your company sort your tech stack make a proposal and then see wait and see like what kind of thing happens to you so the difference in between the participant and the mentors is like something is like yeah so one of the good thing is the stipend so obviously i always tell the mentors is to get more stipend right 
so yeah uh, so yeah the one of the most important thing is like uh, whenever a participant is they will be they are expected to code the things obviously they are expected to develop the solution so the mostly the mentors are here for the reviews and mentors are here for the guide so the process is nothing so much different from a general hackathon when we see in a hackathon the mentors are expected to take the meetings and guide the participant and the participants are there to take the entire thing so yeah so this is one of the important thing but the mentor who is representing the company used to take care of everything yet the reviews are not that easy one like okay i, I am i am telling anyone like I, i had written this piece of code and just given to the company here proper code plagiarism checking and the entire implementations bugs release bugs everything is being properly reviewed so this work entire review work at a deeper level is being done by that kind of mentor and yes the mentors are very supporting whatever whatever mentors i had made at a gsoc and whatever they are doing over here is really for passion their entire everyone is very passionate so this is the good thing like it is all about the mentor mentor relationship they will be guiding and the work to lead into the production suppose the project is completed now the company will be leading the stuff into production this will be done by the collaborative effort of the mentor and the mentee and finally the stuff comes into production yeah so this is the in general how the process of mentor mentee relationship works in agisa uh, so you uh, in the start you told about the proposal so uh, in gso we have to write a proposal i guess so how one can write a good proposal like how what mistakes they can avoid what things they can include so that their proposal gets selected instead of others yeah so as i am already I've, as I, i was already told telling telling about some kind of the points about the proposal so one of the important thing is the proposal should not be robust like it should like it should not speak about a lot of things it should be very to the point because gsoc doesn't want a 100 page of research paper or a 100 page thesis they simply want like okay define our problem statement very first so whenever there are some tips and tricks what what i generally follow or what i generally guide so when you are writing about the problem statement so try to maintain a proper thing like why this problem statement is important what are the problems with the existing solution that the other companies or the other people had deployed and why this problem statement is relevant these are the three things uh, gsoc gsoc reviewers generally used to look on or any problem statement formulation what i personally feel the importance of the thing technically is very important so this is an important thing while formulating the stuff stuff for problem statement secondly is your background so while you are writing your background first list down your important projects yeah i will be not telling if you have 100 projects then list down all your 100 projects sort top 5 and top 5 means relevant means like relevant project you have to apply for an example you are applying to flutter organization and you are trying to make a project your your problem statement is all about mvc architecture customization for an example or it is a very big term suppose simply any any kind of algorithm architecture inside flutter this is your project so your application projects your background project should hit that thing like you have to you have to tell like in this project i had customized this algorithm or i had used this algorithm and this was my solution this was my problem so you are simply telling about the relevant projects to the particular topic and you can make very amount of a good amount of the sub types when we are applying for a machine learning application since all kind of machine learning projects are machine learning is all about research oriented then for us for the machine learning practitioners a good platform will be a good section will be for the research papers if you had an already experience with the research papers or published research papers you can also note a note them down even if even the reviewers want they can read it up so projects research papers if you have the most importantly is the open source contribution the more the person is having good open source at least one good open source contribution i listed my one contribution that selected i listed only one of my contribution because i felt like other contributions is like useless so i listed only one that kind of the google research and that worked for me right so a lot of things don't needed but one relevant and good thing is perfect if it is in depth right so list your open source contributions and and list your internships also in which companies you had previously worked and one liner one liner to each of them so once you are done with your background so next thing is well, you can draft your plan that a little bit of the technical plan now you are drafted with the problem you are drafted with your experience now write a technical plan 
in this technical pan don't try to start with this thing i will be applying this model and and i feel like this accuracy will be this and done no so the architecture is not like that so while drafting a plan first speak about the solutions the problem existing the if there are existing solutions to any problem then try to speak about feasible solutions rather than writing about one solution try to speak about feasible solutions means like okay i can we can think about so, solving this problem in this way and there might be some kind of problem but open for the deployment your proposal should be flexible it doesn't feels like you are like promising about one tech one solution something like this it should be properly flexible so write about some kind of feasible solutions draft your loops and corners pros and cons everything should be properly drafted in a solution section and last but not the least when you are done with the technical plan make it more more good as you can want there is no such big requirement of adding a add, adding any kind of images to it right so i will be also sharing a link to pasana about she can have, she can add into their description box about my exis of proposal which one was accepted so i will be sharing it up you guys can have a look and last but not the least is the plan means like where i was telling you should give a proper timeline okay so if your plan is something like three three goal plan so you should make it something like this uh, week 1 i will be starting about existing work week 2 i will be deploying this week 3 i will be deploying this week 4 goals achieved week 5 review and then again week 6 week 7 week 8 and finally i will be writing a blog maintaining a blog because this is an open source so you have to you have to better work in this kind of terms i will be writing a blog maintaining a blog publishing a blog so everything should be properly documented this things is being counted how much cuts you have for an community so yeah that's it so these are the four to five key points that will be making you up in a good proposal rather rest things you can look on my proposal as well it was the format for i have for tensorflow and one or two other company cncf for format i also have i will be sharing to the pasana so she will be adding it up. yeah that will be a great like if people will get to see a real proposal then they'll get a much better idea um in the uh, in the talk you talked about the open source as well so how important is a open source profile and the beginners are really scared of this open source world they don't know how to start how to get into that so how they can start with their open source journey and how important it is for them as the open source as i am all, already all, as i have already told like open source is simply every one of the every every engineering student have a github account and every day we are uploading our codes to a github and the repository is open public repository unknowingly we you are contributing to open source right so open source is nothing nothing a very big or very high fi thing it's not a piece of technology even some people tell open source is a tech no open source is something of a code a piece of code that is publicly available and free to everyone free to use right the code which you which are open source always comes under some kind of the open source licenses you can see there is a license section at a github while releasing a code though most of the most of us don't give a care about that but yeah some amount of the licenses are the open source licenses simply so suppose suppose you are there is a facebook facebook's code base is open source it means you can search facebook over github and you can see the entire code base of the facebook whatever thing is they are doing and all so most of the people will start thinking like oh, if it is open source then uh, anyone can copy facebook and make new facebook no so the core dependencies are obviously obviously confidential and you cannot even copy an open source code and move into a production because whenever you try to copy the code or try to give a contribution anything like that there is an open source uh, what we say open source mou is being signed or something like open source confidentiality is being maintained so open source li license you have to sign so everything is well secured you cannot run or copy anyone's code and into push it into production so simple open source is it is freely available it is publicly available that way so what do you mean my open source contribution is something like this suppose there is a person called a open source contribution are two personal and others so means like for the personal contribution every day we are doing so means like what i told you are maintaining a repository at github right so that's your open source contribution you are maintaining an open source project right so what are the open source contributions what we tell suppose there is a person called a and a person have it their repository open source so now you go we went to the person's repository and you see the person is listing a two issues in the particular repository suppose it is a website based project and there are two issues fix my ui fix this button 
you went uh, you first texted out that on the simply push the comment on the, there is a very basic art of participating into open source or starting with open source go see the issue select the issue and try to write a comment like hey i am i want to i am really interested to solve this issue so can i solve this and if the person assigns that issue to you then well and nice tell her, okay i will be solving into next 2 hours 4 hours 5 hours accordingly fork the repository and simply fork it fork the repository set up the dependencies so for a website project obviously most of us the dependencies means set up the dependency at your local machine so clone clone down the repository set up the lo into local machine make some changes in in the local machine make a branch make some changes in the local machine and push all your code changes into that particular branch and finally commit the changes to the mother repository that's it this sounds very much complex i know but it is simply make a fork download the code base make the changes offline make a folder in which you are doing the change right make a folder simply on a very start make a folder where you are doing the change simply then upload the code into your fork once you upload the code into your fork now there is a section called as a comment or a pull request right not a comment sorry my bad pull request so click on the button of pull request you will be getting an option of new pull request click on new pull request it will be automatically giving an option push the all codes to the mother repository from where you fork so click on the button that's it now well back and sit and then we get back to that comment section told like i had pushed my code so please have a review then the person will review your code maybe the person will be integrating the your code and see and will see whether the expected thing is done or not if it is done then the person will merge your code to the mother code base and hence your peer merged and you are getting one open source contribution that's it so this is simple it is fixing all about any other repositories and something like this it is very on a simple note what we understand open source so those are things are very deeper into that using open source softwares using open source communities so open source is a very big thing if anyone feels like participating or solving any other code base is all about open source no so just to make it clear and clear for the freshers i am telling in this example but yeah open source is a very big thing every open source stuff is a proper community community driven if we speak about facebook they have a proper community who works on the proper code bases if we speak about tensorflow so whatever things frameworks we are using everything is open source right now open source softwares are free to use firstly even whatever video editing softwares we are using for free free they are also open source right so this is all about open source it's a type of the code that is freely available again so yeah the so open source contribution matters very much so once one you should one if you want to go for a open source contribution so the basic knowledge you should to know is something like there is a also a general policy to start your contribution i tell first have a good knowledge on git and github choose your tech stack suppose you are a web developer no problem first have a good knowledge on git and github go to the platforms like issue hub up for grabs right they are the good platforms they are simply write the keyword html and css so they will be listing down all the open issues in which you can solve into the enough format of a dashboard choose an issue and do the same process that i had already mentioned so that's a very good start in case you don't know then you can see also the several videos which you can have on the open source doing a first open source contribution start participating again on hacktoberfest on hackathons make some open source participation if you participate in hackathons especially mlh hackathons mlh is completely an open source driven community so basically and if you get acquainted with the mlh community you will be knowing about more open source companies so yeah start participating in mlh hackathons they will be giving a good knowledge or sound through about open source and yeah so also go for the gsoc that is we call we all, always called the gsoc light that is girl script summer of code girl script winter of code yeah, and start participating on a webinars you will be getting a good knowledge about it and yeah that's perfect but yeah open source contribution matters a lot even google i'm not speaking about gsocs even the google facebook microsoft is all companies used to tell you don't have a bigger background you don't have nothing no problem solve one of our biggest bug that is present open source we will be hiring so open source is a very big future even all companies you can get you can go anywhere sitting in india right if you want to go meta you 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 start for solving their problems into github you will be getting into it if you want to part, if you want to be an active signatory member from aws to docker to kubernetes docker kubernetes anyone anywhere any bigger companies we know from a confirm to kubecon anywhere you can go by participating into and making some valid open source contribution 
you don't have project but you have open source contribution it, it will work for you that's it so yeah it's very important and from the terms of gsoc yeah more the more valid open source contributions you have it, your, your chance of selection is very good so last thing that remains in selection of gsoc is uh, i guess the organization selection so uh, they they need to select a organization yeah. and they uh, then they need to work over that so how they can uh, select the correct organization for them how they can identify like uh, this can be a correct organization for them so the strategy generally i used to always follow for selecting a correct organization is something like this suppose you are a beginner you are in your your first year so don't rush but you want to participate into gsoc in your second year is very okay no problem up to that time you will be getting good projects as well so that will also help you out because gsoc because there is there is one, one thing like once you get entered into gsoc so again you have to pass two two phases of reviews that is also very important you had written a sound proposal you are into the program but if you can't code over there now they will be kicking you out from the first review so that's very pathetic so i always tell like in order to pass the reviews as well so you need to know the knowledge about the organization and know the knowledge about the problem statement so it's very important so yeah as you have already told us selecting a proper organization is very important so yes so the i i i always tell when you are in a first year now suppose in this year you are in first year you want to participate in 2023 gsoc so this year see all the participating organization which organizations you have for an example there are 80 organization you cannot see set and drop down the names or write the names of 80 organization i understand suppose again the point is when you are in first year one one piece of tech used to excite you suppose you are ai freak then see ai organization suppose you are uh, you are devops freak then see the devops organization you are android freak see the android based organization i personally i personally follow the pen and paper policy simply list down their names and do one thing once the gsoc gets over or not not the over once you are done with the listing down the names because generally organization repeats right so if one or 1% or 2% is getting changed otherwise everything gets repeats every year right so yes so once you are done with listing down the names uh, start communicating start joining their google groups or uh, some kind of, some organizations of google groups some organization of telegram do none no of the platforms is using telegram i don't know i have seen one or two might be most of them are using slack discord um, google groups and zulip for hard the python based organization for the python foundation it's their own platform zulip and for rocket chat it's their own platform rocket chat right so these are the some custom platforms so simply how to join their group simply go to google you don't need any kind of referral though there join open source community of this company join open source community of tensorflow you will be getting the link in their website or in, in, anywhere no, no simply list it down click on it and join it so now joining a group this is not a whatsapp group here the people will be actively communicating with each other there are several rooms being present so the community is are active every day the major actually what we call as community there is an activation inside a community so once obviously you are very new to it so you should not like start with communication but yeah you can network with the people over there you can network with engineers of the of the community or the people of the community who are already active so start speaking with them start try to understand what kind of conversations is been going on so once you are done with no, like monitoring the 10 organizations after you it will take hardly 4 to 5 months see also their github repositories what kind of projects they bought this year so whether this excites you or not what kind of expected problems they used to work on in their github repository so spend some 4 to 5 to 6 months because it's not like it's not like i'm monitoring or monitoring only accordingly side by side you are creating your network and also you are learning a new technical skill by monitoring them maybe you saw, at some point you cannot understand any technical language you can read it out and you can learn so this is learning according to the communities right so see which company sort any three companies whose problem statements area of domain uh, is excites you and also you can understand you can participate in the communication so that's it this will be the three dream companies in which you need to apply at gsoc then when whenever you are applying for the next year prepare accordingly and go and apply to the companies and you will be getting selected there is one problem with the freshers that they get excited with every new term coming in hype like if gsoc is coming they will get excited towards development if google uh, code jam is coming they will get excited towards coding so how uh, you did both the things very well so what you will think that uh, you think that what uh, fresher should do first coding development what they should be their focus of interest so uh, yeah so i had did both of the things like i had a very big problem with this thing 
coding versus development i have personally had a very big problem with them because i feel like both the things are interconnected without code you cannot do development and without development there is no meaning of coding right so but the major thing i want to tell everyone if it is code jamna like i am just sharing my personal experience this year i i, I am semi finalist at google code jam but i am not a active cp practitioner my code forces that I, i i personally had no rank at code forces and i personally had no rank at hacker rank and lead code anything like that but i have but i had clear all rounds at code jam semi finals yeah i am a python coder so my code get lagged down and the time complexity was so big so i am kicked out of the last rounds but yeah i am i i also have a good score at hashcode so how this is possible being a hard coded developer and like also you are solving this kind of dss and everything so simply the logic behind this is if you are a fresher then uh, calm down your mind first <laughs> so uh, yes so see how don't stop seeing how the world flows because if if we started seeing how the world flows only three to four terms will comes up so simply ai blockchain web3 and something like this and otherwise robotics so everyone is doing this so right so actually what we see is all about virtual reality because i personally say because i can only tell about artificial intelligence because i am from this domain i will be not telling about others but yeah so if 1 lakh people is practicing ai ml only 1% comes up and rest are washed out so this is the game so because when we this is a core technology when we speak about technology either you have to be master in this other other it will be no value of so if you are a fresher so it's very good that we, every every fresher should come up with a technology so pick so, uh, like having a proper technology or a choice of a technology is very important means like first try to again my same way will be like this learn your programming language clear the data structures first stop doing anything clear your data structures once you clear your data structures your 99% coding is done rest development is all about logic building development is all about logic building yeah there is a problem okay this is how and how and how i will be solving it and place your ds and everything on that and you can make a code right and about the technical skills skills you can grow by studying online at a youtubes and this kind of the platforms amazing lectures are there so first clear the data structure and learn a language start with c++ c no issues you don't need to be a master of all initially i will be learning julia scala perl ruby no problem so simply learn a simple language and now once you are done with clearing the data structures in c++ again the choice of technology is very important if you want to go into the web so don't res- resist yourself into by html css and done i am a web developer no go to the very deeper of that please start playing with the js architectures don't stop even at react js view js next js type js maybe various types of things are there so go very deeper to that and for the choice and the shift that you had asked about in the question that everything the new term gets excited so new term get excited so uh, from the term of whenever you like sarcastically if i want to if i want to speak uh, so everyone had was shark tank so like from ashni river language bhai kya kar raha hai to make a poster in your desk and you can you, you will stop thinking about the stuff and from a very from a experience point of view i want to tell you cannot be a master of all technologies right uh though who at who tell i know this i know this i know this so there any one of us is not master if anyone tell me right now i have spent 4 to 3 years in industry and make a website i will be telling no i cannot right i yes, i can see anyone's code and like i can cut the code like this but i cannot make it completely by myself right this is the game so you cannot be the master of everything no neither no company demands the master of everything no company demands company demands you should be master of one thing and you should be very depth of it and development versus coding the biggest hot topic of the industry is nothing both are interconnected cp is your choice if you want to do cp like if you are aiming for this yeah again yes if you are aiming for this program like code jam and hash code i personally feel doesn't feel cp is very important it's all about more deeper mathematical understanding of the data structures right so more you understand the dsa the more good you can score over there right so this is a way because the time is not a very efficient factor over there now you have to make your algorithms more efficient time complexity less space complexity less like solving a algorithm based approach it was all about logic building so yes so so simply make a planner if you work 8 hours a day um, i personally tell when you are in your first year and second year work since everyone is technically advanced right now 12 to 16 hours a day right 
but since anyone will not do it i know so basically 8 to 10 hours a day if you work give your 5 hours in simply coding and dsa or make or simply for not 5 hours 3 to 4 hours a day in coding and dsa uh, again 3 hours near about to for technical knowledge and the rest to 1 hours you leave make projects out of it so it is a very sorted plan for the first year and second year so it will help you and once you get into internship because dsa is a temporary thing na 6 months you will spend and you will be learning done and now now you will be getting a vacant time you will you will be doing internship on that vacant time that's it to sort of plan but yeah when you are whenever you are getting excited about any new terms like remember ashni bro everything will be sorted out because nothing happens yeah uh, that can be the best advice to are those who are stuck at one thing or the new terms so uh so we have discussed lot of thing just wanted to know any do's and don'ts you want to give to the freshers like because you have so much experience so i wanted to have know some do's and don'ts you would like to suggest to our freshers so the do's and don'ts is nothing lot of thing because everyone is studying study properly again yeah study properly without enter, like before entering into any kind of industry or before doing even internships many students directly jump into internships after studying only one one topic so so make again make good projects and understand the topic at a very depth it's the knowledge should not be superficial right because the industry is a very long lasting effect so if more knowledge you have more long lasting effect you can give and yes so don't jump don't hurry don't rush so rest of the things will come more you pro- more you make good projects and more you are you are having good skills and deeper understandings of dsas is actually required and technical skills that i had already mentioned i had seen people js okay react js stop like a front end like in even i am even to speak about web development people i only do front end why not back end back end why not back end it's a very important thing because a company will be needing if you are a web so if you need to, if you are a web developer you should be come coming from good front end back right so rather when you are going from going to industry industry will calculate out like okay you okay, you are a simple front end developer no problem but initially you should do both of the things right so, and start participating start communicating and network with the people so network with the people and uh, be humble right it's very important because there is a very long la- learning experience right be humble and yes everything is very nice like more you more you have skills initially there is a initially everyone see you opening a linkedin you will be getting frustrated everyone is doing blah 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 things yes everything comes from failures and don't worry about it once you grow skill once you have dashing project you will be see the comp- competition is zero that's it so everything will get happen no problem that's very great and i don't have anything now from my side i got to know so so much anything you would like to add at last ah uh, it's nothing like that So guys I hope you find this video helpful and Anushtub thank you for coming to this channel and giving so much uh, knowledge about GSOC and all the other things and I want to learn so much so I hope the audience will also get to learn so much and they will get more insight to GSOC or development and how they can make a path from freshers to the to after 2 3 or 3 years they can see themselves in a very big uh, also that is all for this video thanks for watching and if you have any doubt then do let us know in the comment section below we would love to answer your doubts and even if you like the one person of the video then do consider liking it and subscribing to our channel uh, so that's it for this video thanks for watching we'll meet in the next week